I'm Takashi Fujita, the professor of the Laboratory of Molecular and Cellular Immunology of the Graduate School of Biostudies. My laboratory studies human and animal viruses and the immune responses against these viruses. Pathogens such as viruses and bacteria cause disease in humans with symptoms such as fever and sometimes threaten our lives or result in severe sequelae. We cannot see viruses under usual light microscope. We need to use the power of an electron microscope to visualize them. For example, influenza virus appears to be an irregular bag with a hairy structure on the surface. On the other hand, poliovirus appears to be a regular icosahedron. However, these particles do not replicate by themselves. How can we detect the replication of viruses? Viruses require host cells for their replication. When viruses infect cells, cell death is induced with simultaneous release of progeny viruses. However, if cells are pretreated with a protein termed interferon and infected with viruses, viral replication is impaired and cells continue to replicate. Here are two videos of virus infected cells. HeLa cells are infected with encephalomyocarditis virus, EMCV, for 24 hours. All the cells die within 24 hours. However, if the cells are pretreated with interferon before being infected with EMCV, the cells do not die, instead they proliferate. I'd like to emphasize that interferon acts on host cells, not on viruses, and blocks the replication of different viruses. I'd like to explain how interferon delivers its antiviral activity. An interferon receptor is expressed on the surface of host cells. When cells are exposed to interferon, it activates signal transducer and activator of transcription, STAT, through interaction with its receptor. Subsequently, the activated STAT forms a complex with IRF9 and translocates into the nucleus, where a group of genes termed interferon stimulated genes or ISGs are activated. The ISGs encode proteins with viral replication inhibitory activities. Therefore, cells develop an antiviral state in which viral replication is restrained. Then, how is interferon produced? Interferon is a group of proteins encoded in interferon genes. However, normally, interferon genes are not active. When a virus infects a cell and starts replication, viral RNA is generated. This viral RNA is sensed by host sensors RIGI and MD5, resulting in the activation of cascade of events, including activation of transcription factors, IRF3, IRF7, and NF-kappa-B. These factors activate interferon genes in the nucleus, and finally, interferon is secreted. Sensing pathogen-related molecules and the activation of the antipathogen reaction is collectively termed as innate immunity. It is critical to discriminate viral RNA from cellular RNA. Viruses produce double-stranded RNA during replication, and this double-stranded RNA structure is sensed as viral RNA. Double-stranded RNA forms an A-form 
double helix, whereas the structure of double-stranded DNA is in B form. Therefore, viral RNA sensors do not sense DNA. The atomic structure of Rigai and MDF5 revealed that these sensors normally form an open structure in which one of the structure domains, card, is hindered by interaction with other domains. When these sensors bind with double-stranded RNA, they change conformation into a packed structure with card exposed. Card plays an important role for the propagation of signaling through interaction with another effector molecule termed IPS1. It has been known that viral replication sensing double-stranded RNA by Rigai and MDF5 and the integration of signaling take place at a dis distinct locus in the cells. We found that viral RNA sensing takes place in a certain compartment in which Rigai, MDF5 and double-stranded RNA accumulate. In uninfected cells, Rigai is diffusely distributed. However, infection with Synthvis virus, EMCV, Newcastle disease virus, induces granular localization of Rigai. Because the formation of this granule is related to antiviral responses, we term them antiviral stress granules. However, not all viruses induce antiviral stress granules. For example, influenza virus infection does not induce antiviral stress granules. Interestingly, influenza virus deficient of NS1 protein efficiently induces antiviral stress granule and interferon production. In summary, NS1 of influenza virus is critical for inhibiting antiviral stress granule and interferon to secure viral replication. It has been discovered that different viruses block interferon signaling with different strategies. I have described the importance of interferon production to counteract with viral infection. Is it beneficial to have interferon constantly prepared in case of viral infection? The answer was provided from studying mice. Experimental random mutagenesis of mice produced a mouse strain with a mutation in the gene encoding MDA5. A single amino acid of MDA5 in this mouse is altered from glycine to serine. Therefore, we term this strain as GS mouse. The GS mouse is small compared to wild type mouse. To our surprise, this mouse exhibits constant production of interferon in a variety of organs, which is never observed in a normal mouse. More importantly, this mouse had a very short life compared to a normal mouse. Further analysis revealed that the GS mouse exhibits abnormalities in the kidney, skin, and liver. These symptoms are similar to those found in human patients with autoimmunity. Further studies are ongoing to relate human disease and MD5 mutations. As described earlier, our main research focus is on antiviral innate immunity. Our aim is to understand the mechanism of immune responses and to develop diagnostic and therapeutic means against viral infections. In addition, we focus on understanding autoimmunity caused by abnormal function of immunity in order to develop mechanism-based treatment. My laboratory resides in the Institute for Virus Research, Kyoto University.
Our lab members are composed of Japanese members as well as foreign students from 10 different countries and areas. We hold lab meetings and discussions in English as the common language. I encourage my students to take short-term visit to laboratories in foreign countries to learn about new technology and for international collaboration.